I have ascended, it seems. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, uh, the holidays are here, uh, and I've been thinking a lot lately uh, about Santa and his marriage with Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Just how much of a dumpster fire of a marriage that probably is, okay? I mean, this is the guy who, I'm just gonna move this a little closer. This is the guy who spends all year judging people, children at that, <laughs> putting them on a naughty or nice list. And that's another thing. Why naughty? Like, that is a really frisky word to pick. <laughs> There's a lot of words you could pick to describe children that are not behaving and you really went with naughty, I mean, I just, I don't get it. And then once a year, the guy scurries off to infiltrate households. You know, but not all households, he only goes to like, Christian and non-religious households. If you're, anything else, if you're anything else, he does not go to your house. We don't talk about that though, but yeah. See, the thing with this, though, is that I don't understand what Mrs. Claus is putting up with. <laughs> Take Mackenzie Scott, for example, if you guys don't know who she is, she became, I believe, the richest woman in the world through divorcing Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, why doesn't Mrs. Claus take a page out of her book? I mean, what if Santa and Mrs. Claus were to get divorced? Think of the ramifications that would have on our holidays, guys. Like, <laughs> Half the presents in the world would immediately go to her, it's alimony. <laughs> Half the elves, they're gone. Half the reindeer, those are gone too. I mean, like, it would be a tough battle in court, but I'm pretty sure she could get rid of <laughs> <laughs> With all of that, she could create her own Christmas, or not, I don't know. The opportunity is hers. Not really sure how to end this, but, you know, Merry Christmas, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, holidays are great, guys. Uh, I get a lot of bloody noses, you know, this time of the year that comes with the holidays. And so, yeah, that was a, mm, yeah, bloody noses. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with bloody noses, though, is that like, you might be wondering, like, how am I getting them so frequently in the winter? And I can tell you this, it's not from cocaine, all right? <laughs> I don't know. I only do bloody noses seasonally, I only get bloody noses seasonally, but I do cocaine all year round. <laughs> I have very bad allergies though, so for a couple months I'm basically just sneezing blood. <laughs> and uh, when you sneeze, you know for about three seconds that you're going to sneeze and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So I have some important decisions that I need to make in those three seconds, you know? I gotta decide what do I want to ruin, my clothes or the wall or my waitress's face. <laughs> it's bad, guys. Like, this suit used to be white. <laughs> but, you know, I will say this with bloody noses. I feel like they've helped me appreciate kind of like what women go through on their periods a lot more. Because nosebleeds are probably the closest thing that a man can get to a bloody nose. I mean, tampons were afraid of both of them. <laughs> and one time I didn't get a bloody nose for like a whole month. And I thought I was pregnant. <laughs> but then I realized, like, obviously I couldn't get pregnant, right? Because in order to get pregnant, you actually have to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I listen to a lot of obscure music. I really wish. <laughs> I listen to mainstream music, it would be really nice to be part of the conversation. <laughs> but, you know, I, I really like things like old security footage from the Meyer parking lots. <laughs> That's kind of my jam right now. I used to be into construction noises, but they don't hit like how it used to. I work at Gordon Food Service, uh, and it's a pretty awesome job, but I made a pretty bad mistake at work there recently. You see, there's this, we ship food into Canada, that's what we do, and there was this Muslim store that needed some Lamal chicken, and 
I, if you guys don't know what halal is, it's food that's been prepped according to the Muslim law. It's been blessed by Allah or, or something. I, I'm not really sure myself. See, I thought the law at the time, which is a brand name, like Hormel. <laughs> <laughs> so when this Muslim store needed some of this special halal chicken, and we were out of it, I just shipped them Tyson instead. <laughs> that's a good brand, you know? By the time I figured out what happened, Eight of the Muslims had already eaten it, so I was very confused why I was getting emails saying we're gonna burn in hell because they didn't get their halal brain and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so my boss, yeah, he got pretty mad at me because I got you up for that. Uh, he said that making our customers commit acts against our faith is bad. It's called blasphemy. <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. <laughs> It's not part of the GFS four competencies that I learned during orientation. <laughs> Normally, the first time you do something like this, it's just a slap on the wrist. But the problem is, is I did the same thing with kosher last month. <laughs> kind of becoming a recurring theme at this point. <laughs> Might be the antichrist. <laughs> but the good news is, is, I'm running out of religions I can even do this with. And with every act of blasphemy that I cause, I'm learning a little more about world religions each day. <laughs> uh, okay. So I was uh, watching this show called Pimp My Ride the other day. I don't know if you guys remember that show. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. So it's this show where like, they would take these old beat-up cars and they would give them these extreme makeovers for things that you would never need. Like, a chandelier for internal lighting. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's just actually what they did on the show. It's pretty stupid, I know. But it gave me an idea, right? Like, these cars were old and beat up. They barely had any time like left on them, yet they gave them these extreme makeovers. Like, it's like giving an extreme makeover to your 100-year-old dying grandma. Yeah. But then that made me think that that's a show. Pit my grandma. <laughs> of nursing homes, <laughs> but the dating scene there is not great. <laughs> um, you know, like, I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement, you know? We could, we could, we could pick these cameras up, we could give them some, some turbo boosters on the wheelchair, we could give them some uh, hydraulics for that wheelchair, some gold dentures, you know? I'm not saying that I would go there and pick old ladies up, but if one of them was God, I might consider it. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of room for it. It's an untapped market. All right, I got the red light, so I'll get out of here.